Okay, hi, and welcome back to Mamarama. Um, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I just, uh, I, you know, I, I, I want to like cut out the preamble, cut out the apologies. I have um, a bunch of stuff to talk about today, um, primarily about um, one film in, predict in particular that um, I wanted to, uh, to focus on. So um, I think today's theme is really going to be about um, um, some sort of birth, pregnancy, not so much pregnancy, birth and maybe, um, maybe that's it. That's all we stick to today is birth. So without any further ado, um, I wanted to talk about this film that, um, okay guys, okay, got that cleared up. So um, the film I wanted to talk about that I was um, fortunate enough to see um, during its, uh, its screening with the Tribeca Film Festival was a film called um, The Business of Being Born. And um, you may have heard some things about that. It was um, uh, executive produced by Ricky Lake and uh, directed by a, a woman, um, Abby Epstein. Um, the, uh, a lot of the press and the sort of like buzz around the film unfortunately centers on the fact that um, Ricky Lake's uh, birth is, is in the film. Um, <clears throat> she had a, a home birth for her second child and, um, I, you know, I mean, it was videotaped for her own personal use, of course, um, but she wanted to include it in the film because um, her, f her first birth was just sort of like kind of a standard hospital birth that I don't think was the... Um, uh, was the experience she was really looking for. Um, and then her second birth, she opted to have a home birth, um, had her baby in the bathtub, and uh, it's a very beautiful and moving scene. Um, but this film is not about her, nor is it about her birth. It's just, you know, a couple of seconds, really, in the, in the entire film. Um, so, uh, you know, the press can't get around the fact that, like, a celebrity is naked in her own home birthing her baby. I mean, how much more intimate can you get than that? So <clears throat> I have to applaud her and uh, really all of the women in the film who um, opened their private moments up to us <laughs> really for this, um, uh, for, for, it, for this particular film. And the film's premise really is about um, the, uh, the state of maternity care in the United States at the moment, um, which uh, I think I have a quote here from Abby Epstein. She says, <clears throat> I felt like I had an opportunity to explore birthing practices in this country and perhaps be an advocate for mother's rights and better maternity care. Actually, I'm sorry, that was, I think, Ricky Lake's quote. Um, Abby says, it is well researched and documented that birthing, um, uh, birthing in the United States is in crisis. We have the worst infant mortality rate of all Western industrialized nations in the world. Okay, and I think that that comes as a surprise to, um, I think that comes as a surprise to a lot of people that the United States, birthing in the United States, uh, which is primarily done in hospitals, is actually um, a sort of, uh, I'm not going to say it's dangerous, but it's just the notion that our statistics are worse, um, you know, overall in the entire country, in the entire world. Um, we're looking at like uh, they explain in the film how um, they choose all these different countries. I mean, everything from Scandinavia, parts of Europe, Japan, New Zealand, all over the place where there where midwifery is really. Um, either more of the model, like in Scandinavia, it's primarily midwifery for birthing, um, or in other countries where it's about half and half. Um, so, I mean, think about it. That means, you know, one in every two women you run into would have gone with midwifery care for her pregnancy and for her birth. Whereas when you look in the United States and you talk to people, um, it's very unusual to find uh, women who have birthed uh, with midwives. Um, the rate in the United States is under 8%. So think about that. That's a lot of women giving, births in, hosp giving birth in hospitals. And it's also um, uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, a huge uh, cesarean rate in this country. Um, I, I mean, the cesarean rate is growing steadily every year. 
I think at this point, um, I mean, it, it, it varies from practice to practice and hospital to hospital, but I think at this point, the average is about 40% of hospital births, um, obviously, are, um, are done by cesarean. So, what this film shows us is uh, what a typical hospital birth is like and why it kind of goes awry in such a way that leads to a C-section. And it also shows us the, um, the alternative to that, to birthing with a midwife either in your own home, which I know frightens a lot of people, or in a birthing center, which is kind of a happy medium between a home and a hospital. Um, birthing centers, there, there's only one birthing center in, the New York, in New York right now, which is um, um, in St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. Um, there used to be a freestanding uh, birthing center, Elizabeth Seton, that closed in uh, 2003. So um, you can see just by the notion that these birthing centers are almost, you know, become, they're, they're sort of becoming obsolete, um, you can see that the midwifery model is, um, we, we worry, like people are worried that it's on the verge of extinction. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the, um, uh, how they illustrated in the film the notion of um, how a hospital birth um, spirals out of control. It was really nicely done and it was, uh, in the film they did it in animation, so it was really, you know, just kind of easy to understand and sort of illustrated the point um, very nicely, which I'm going to attempt to do. Um, but basically what, what happens in a typical hospital birth is that um, really the woman is often not given her own pace in which to birth. So sometimes she'll come into the hospital and maybe only be a few centimeters dilated um, and she'll be put on a fetal monitor and she'll be given an epidural either when she asks for it or um, you know when everybody around her sort of pressures, pressures her to do so. Uh, you know I mean she may go in thinking well this is exactly what I want and go ahead and do that. Um, but what often happens, whether she's on an epidural or not, is um, Pitocin is usually usually administered. And Pitocin is a synthetic form of the hormone that um, causes the contractions uh, during labor. So when a woman has a contraction naturally, uh, contraction sort of follows a, a curve. It has an arc of, of pain, basically. It kind of starts out mellow and it gets more intense and it peaks and then it fades off. Um, and then you have a period of rest in between um, contractions. I mean, typically, sometimes in transition, they kind of slam you one at a time, but usually a contraction comes and there's a break in between, which for a woman in labor, trying to do it naturally, this is kind of a nice kind of cause and effect because you have the, um, you have like a rush of uh, endorphins sometimes after the pain is over that just kind of like settle you down and then you kind of go back into it again. Um, so when Pitocin is given to a woman, the synthetic version of this same hormone, um, it cannot replicate a contraction the way a woman naturally would have a contraction. So it's really hard and intense and longer than a typical contraction, and it doesn't have that little arc that I was telling, that I was explaining. It's just kind of all, brrr, um, which is very difficult to endure. So most women who um, ha have been given pitocin um, via an IV um, are begging for an epidural. It's very unusual for someone not to get an epidural if they've had pitocin because the contractions are so intense and long and so forth. 